you may have heard of something called the gap theory. So the gap theory suggests that there is an indefinite gap of time between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, where an event occurred that threw God's creation into this formless and void state. So for starters, people will say that the word was in this verse is actually translated became. So the earth became without form and void. Now, that is true. This word can be translated as became, but it can also be translated exist or come to pass. So this verse could read, the earth existed without form and void, or it came to pass that the earth was without form and void. The stronger argument, in my opinion, is when you compare Genesis 1-2 with Isaiah 45-18. Because here in Genesis, we just read that the earth was without form and void. In Hebrew, the expression is tohu vabohu. Okay, but in Isaiah 45, 18, we read this. Thus says the Lord who formed the earth and made it, who did not create it in vain. And the expression in vain is translated tohu vabohu. And so in order to explain this apparent discrepancy, some will suggest the gap theory. That between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2, this is when Ezekiel chapter 28 took place, which describes the fall of Lucifer from glorified to profane, they say this is when Lucifer drew a third of the angels with him uh, and corrupted what God had created. Isaiah 14 says Lucifer made the world as a wilderness. And so God destroys the world with an original flood that predates the flood of Noah. And this is how the world, which God did not create tohu vabohu, Isaiah 45, became tohu vabohu, Genesis 1-2, without form and void. They also suggest this is why the spirit is brooding over the face of the waters. That word hovering can be translated to brood, and the word brood means to think about something that makes you upset. They'll even bring in references to a fleeing serpent from other parts of the Bible. Job 26, 13 says, by his spirit he adorned the heavens, his hand pierced the fleeing serpent. Isaiah 27, 1 says, in that day the Lord will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. So they'll say these references to Leviathan or the fleeing serpent or the reptile that is in the sea, that those are references to Satan who is now, after he has corrupted God's original creation, God's destroyed the earth with a first flood. So the serpent, or so the spirit, excuse me, is brooding over the face of the waters where the serpent now is to destroy him. The only way the gap theory is possible is with this caveat. Because some people will take the gap theory as far as to suggest there was a pre-Adamic race. That there was a race of humans that was created before Adam and Eve. Uh, they'll even use this to attempt to explain the age of the earth or they'll use it to try and justify the fossil record. That's where I strongly disagree. Because the Bible says very clearly in Romans 5, sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin. So if there had been a pre-Adamic race, that they all died, or even if the, the dinosaurs supposedly died during this time, that would contradict the very clear teaching of Scripture. The only way the gap theory is possible, I'm not adamant saying it happened, I'm saying the only way it's possible is that, yes, perhaps if Lucifer rebelled during this time uh, and draws a third of the angels with him and they come to earth to corrupt God's creation, that all happens prior to God creating any form of life. And all they're corrupting would just be the basic building blocks or structures of nature. 